In 1905, only five years after Planck presented his quantum theory, Albert Einstein used the theory to solve another mystery in physics, the photoelectric effect, a phenomenon in which electrons are ejected from the surface of certain metals exposed to light of at least a certain minimum frequency called the threshold frequency. The number of electrons ejected was proportional to the intensity or brightness of the light, but the energies of the ejected electrons were not. Below the threshold frequency, no electrons were ejected no matter how intense the light. This figure shows an apparatus for studying the photoelectric effect. Light of a certain frequency falls on a clean metal surface. Ejected electrons are attracted toward the positive electrode. The flow of electrons is registered by a detecting meter. Light meters used in cameras are based on the photoelectric effect. The photoelectric effect could not be explained by the wave theory of light. Einstein, however, made an extraordinary assumption. He suggested that a beam of light is really a stream of particles. The particles of light are now called photons. He suggested that a beam of light is really a stream of particles. These particles of light are now called photons. Using Planck's quantum theory of radiation as a starting point, Einstein deduced that each photon must possess an energy E, given by the equation E is equal to h nu. Electrons are held in a metal by attractive forces, so removing them from the metal requires light of a sufficiently high frequency, which corresponds to a sufficiently high energy, in order to break them free. Shining a beam of light onto a metal surface can be thought of as shooting a beam of particles, or photons, at the metal atoms. If the frequency of the photons is such that h nu is exactly equal to the energy that binds the electrons in the metal, then the light will have just enough energy to knock the electrons loose. If we use light of a higher frequency, then not only will electrons be knocked loose, but they will also acquire some kinetic energy. This situation is summarized by the following equation. The energy, which is equal to h nu, is equal to the kinetic energy plus w, which is the work function. Again, Ke is the kinetic energy of the ejected electron, and W is the work function, which is a measure of how strongly the electrons are held in the metal. We can rewrite this equation as kinetic energy is equal to h nu minus W, the work function. And this shows that the more energetic the photon, that is the higher the frequency, the greater the kinetic energy of the ejected electron. Now consider two beams of light having the same frequency, which is greater than the threshold frequency, but different intensities. The more intense beam of light consists of a larger number of photons, and consequently, it ejects more electrons from the metal surface than the weaker beam of light. Thus, the more intense the light, the greater the number of electrons emitted by the target metal, the higher the frequency of the light, the greater the kinetic energy of the ejected electrons. Einstein's theory of light posed a dilemma for scientists. On one hand, it explains the photoelectric effect satisfactorily. On the other hand, the particle theory of light is not consistent with the known behavior of light. On the other hand, the particle theory of light is not consistent with the known wave behavior of light. The only way to resolve the dilemma is to accept the idea that light possesses both particle-like and wave-like properties. Depending on the experiment, light behaves either as a wave or as a stream of particles. This concept, called particle wave duality, was totally alien to the way physicists had thought about matter and radiation, and it took a long time for them to accept it. We are going to see later on that a dual nature, particles and waves, is not unique to light, but is also characteristic of all matter, including electrons. Let's try a problem. It says here in example 7.2, calculate the amount of energy in joules of a photon with a wavelength of 5.00 times 10 to the power of 4 nanometers. This falls in the infrared region of the electromagnetic spectrum. Well, if we want to calculate the energy of a photon, our energy is equal to h nu, but we are not given frequency. We are given the wavelength, and since we know that the speed of light is equal to lambda times nu, we can solve for nu, which is equal to speed of light divided by wavelength. So we can plug that into our equation and we get E is equal to hc over lambda. H is Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joules times seconds. We have our speed of light 3.00 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second.
and we have our wavelength and we're going to convert that nanometers into meters and you should know that um, in uh, one meter or one nanometer rather we have have one times ten to the negative nine nanometers okay and so we can do that conversion factor in the or we can stick that in the denominator so we'll have 5.00 times 10 to the power of 4 nanometers and then I'm going to have 1 meter and in 1 meter I have 10 1 times 10 to the power of 9 nanometers like that so let's double check here we can see that um, seconds cancel out see that nanometers cancel out meters cancel out and we're left over with the units of joules and when you punch all of that into your calculator, you end up with an energy of that photon as being 3.98 times 10 to the negative 21 joules. And so there we have it. That's the energy of our photon. In the next part, it asks us to calculate the energy of a photon with a wavelength of 5 times 10 to the minus 2 nanometers. We're going to employ the exact same strategy. We know that E is equal to HC over lambda, like that. And we're going to plug in our numbers. So we have Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds, multiplied by the speed of light, 3.00 times 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. We're going to convert that wavelength from nanometers into meters in the denominator. So we'll put 5.00 times 10 to the negative 2 nanometers and we know that in um, one meter we have one times ten to the power of nine nanometers like that okay double check our units we see the seconds cancel nanometers cancel as do meters we're left over with joules and when we plug that in we end up with a number which is 3.98 times 10 to the negative 15 joules and does this make sense well we're comparing light that's in the IR, the infrared region, versus the X-ray region. In X-ray um, region, we know that electromagnetic radiation is going to have um, a shorter wavelength, and it's going to have a higher frequency, and it's also going to have a higher energy. And so this makes sense that the um, photon of a shorter wavelength is going to have a higher energy than that uh, photon of a lower wavelength. Example 7.3, the work function of cesium metal is 3.42 times 10 to the minus 19 joules. Calculate the minimum frequency of light required to release electrons from the metal. So we have the equation H nu is equal to kinetic energy, and this is the kinetic energy of the electron, plus W, and W is the work function, and it is a measure of how, how tightly or how strongly how strongly electrons are held are held by the metal. And so if we want to calculate the minimum frequency of light that's required to release the electrons, we don't need for the, um, for the electron to have any kinetic energy at all. We just want to know, basically using the work function, what's that minimum amount of frequency that we're going to need to release those electrons. So we can write the equation H nu is equal to Ke plus W, and our Ke is going to be zero. So we can rewrite the equation H nu is equal to W, and, then, and we'll rearrange that to nu is equal to W over H, and so we'll plug in our work function, 3.42 times 10 to the negative 19 joules, divided by Planck's constant, which is 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds, like that, so we end up with this and we're going to end up with reciprocal seconds and when we punch that into our calculator we end up with an answer which is 5.16 times 10 to the 14 reciprocal seconds or hertz either way but this is the minimum frequency of light required to remove electrons from the metal in part b calculate the kinetic energy of the ejected electron if light of frequency 1 times 10 to the 15 reciprocal seconds is used for irradiating the metal. We can rewrite the equation. H nu is equal to Ke plus W. We can rewrite that and solve for Ke. Ke is going to be equal to H nu minus W. Now we can just plug in some numbers. So we have our Ke is going to be equal to 
h, which is Planck's constant, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds, multiplied by the frequency, which is 1.00 times 10 to the 15 reciprocal seconds, like that. And we're going to take all that, and then we're going to subtract from that the work function, which is 3.42 times 10 to the negative 19 joules. And when we punch all that into our calculator and solve for that kinetic energy, we are left over with 3.21 times 10 to the minus 19 joules as the kinetic energy of that ejected electron when light that has a frequency of 1 times 10 to the power of 15 hertz or reciprocal seconds is used for irradiating the metal.